In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to use this Strokes Photoshop action. And so what the action does, it will take your photo and transform it into something along the lines of this, uh, where we have full layer uh, control and we can easily change all the colors. So go ahead and open up a photo to work with. Now, a few things to check before we run the action. Just go to the image uh, menu, go to mode. Make sure you're in RGB color mode and 8 bits of channel is selected. Secondly, make sure that your layer is set as the background. So it needs to look like this. If it doesn't and you open up your photo, just go and it looks, it's called something else. It doesn't have a background text or lock symbol. Go to layer, new background from layer. That'll set it as the background. Uh, next, just go into the layer panel, hit this top right hand corner icon and go to panel options. Make sure that add copy to copied layers and groups is selected. And lastly, just make sure that you're using a nice uh, size resolution photo. You can see mine's 900 by 3000 at 300 dpi. Okay, so with that done, what we need to do firstly is create a new layer and it needs to be called brush. It must be all lowercase for the action to work. Okay, so go ahead and do that. Now what you want to do is hit B on the keyboard, grab a brush, right click, select a soft or hard brush, doesn't really matter. Select the color, any color, doesn't matter, and you want to brush over your photo where you want to apply the effect, all right? Now, I've just done one earlier here. You can see I have my brush layer right there, and that's where I want to apply the effect. So with that done, we need to now load up our Actions panel. So if you go to the Window menu, uh, sorry, yeah, Window menu, go to Actions. Uh, now, the action, <coughs> excuse me, the Actions panel will appear here. Go to the rock, top right-hand corner, icon, select that and go to load actions and just double click on the strokes.atn file and it appears here. So all you need to do is select this action and click play. The action takes between two and three minutes to complete so I'm just going to click play then fast forward the video then we'll talk about all the ways we can customize it. Okay the action stopped and here we have our default look. So I'm just going to minimize the actions panel now and we're going to go inside the layer panel and talk about all the ways we can customize this look. So firstly, you probably want to minimize all these folders that are open. So to do that quickly, hold down Control alt on a PC command option on a Mac and just click on this strokes folder arrow. Just click that and it will collapse all the folders inside so we have a much neater uh, looking workflow. Okay, from the top here we have our adjustments folder. So if we go inside here, we just have a few uh, layers to affect the overall look of our design. Um, so at the top here, we have our brush layer. If you wanted to run the action again and brush different areas, you can just delete all the layers apart from this one and run the action again. Layer below is a quick look at the before and after and what the action does and just a good reference when you're working away to flick back um, to the original. Overall saturation by default, the saturation is cranked up a little bit, so you can see that it's a normal amount, and but you can play around with that uh, if you want. Uh, adjust brightness. This is just a, a handy little control to you know play around with the contrast and overall brightness of your design. All right, so I'll reset that. Now, use original color. What this will do? This will overlay. The original colors from the photo over the entire image. So you can see what happened when I turned that on. So you can see in his face there's um, little pockets of grey on his neck here. But when we turn this one on, it just overlays all the original colors from here on the entire image. So any any um, adjustment layers or colors you add below this layer won't do anything because this layer is controlling the overall um, color look. All right, so. Let's now go inside the strokes folder and this is where we have everything. So let's go inside and the first thing we'll talk about is ways that we can sort of recolor some of these elements. So the default look when you run the action on any photos is it'll be heavily grey around the around the edges. So if you want to change that, you go into the outer texture folder down the bottom here, go inside here and we have two layers, texture one and texture two. Now if you want to apply some colour, all you need to do is double click on this box and select the color just like that okay so let's go with a blue and the same with texture 2 so you can see if I move 
texture tool out. It's a very subtle, uh, abstract looking texture that sits around the edge. So you can, again, double click on this box and let's go. We can see, you can see the effect there. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, we'll go just with an orange. What you can also do with texture one, if you select it and zoom out a bit, hit control T to scale it and you can, you can make it much bigger if you want, or you know, you could uh, rotate it, it's up to you. Okay, uh, what else can we do? We have our outer strokes folder. So if I move this folder around, you can see that behind our um, area that we brushed, we have these, these lines. Okay, so if we go inside this folder, we can double click again on this box and let's go blue. We can color those lines. So you can see if I move this out to the side now, what we have. And if I select this layer and zoom out again, control T to scale, I can scale these up like that. So you can see that that's a much more prominent uh, effect now. All right, and of course you can also, if I just select and go control J, uh, actually what's probably better if you select both these layers and go control J, uh, you can move one at the top here, you can move this one down the bottom. So we've got two different sets of strokes and we could choose that orange again. You can also rotate these. So I zoom out again, control T, and I'll just click and drag. You can create um, some different angle strokes doing that. Okay, so up the top here, there's another color option called Smudge. Now by default, it's turned off. So just if you flick that on, you won't notice much at the start. Um, but if you look just around his neck here, when I turn this one on and off, just adds a little bit of subtle, subtle color. So if you go inside this folder, uh, and flick this one on, you can see that it's much more prominent now. And again, you can double click on this uh, here and cycle through the colors. So you've really got three different um, color options right around the edge here. Um, so that's just go with the dark blue. And you can actually, I'll turn this back to a bright blue. And so if you go with a brighter color, you can flick this one on, randomize color. And then you can double click on this and just use this scroller to quickly scroll through and preview different colors. Okay. So let's turn this one back to that. Okay, this layer here, outer lines, if I move this one out to the side, you can see that behind our photo, we have all these angular sort of sketched look lines. They sit behind the photo, okay? So if you go inside this folder, there's a bunch of different layers. You can move them all uh, individually. If you want more control that way. You can, of course, select the entire folder and again, hit Control T to, and you know rotate. You can, of course, scale. So there's a lot of control there. All right, so full sketch overlay. By default, this is turned off. This is just a subtle effect. If you turn this one on, and I'll move it out to the side, you can see that it just overlays basically a, um, an outlined copy of your photo, places it on top of our design and it's set the blend mode to multiple. So uh, if I turn that down to color burn, you can see that that um, creates a much more prominent effect. So you might want to experiment with um, different blend modes with that one. Photo color, if I turn this one on and off, you can see that that's where the photo, uh, where the color is coming from. But you'll notice that the color isn't applied to these, to these um, pockets of gray here, like on his neck. Um, on his shirt here and around his eyes. And I'll show you why it's doing that. So we go inside here. We have this layer down the bottom called Photo Color Mask. Mask. So if I shift select this mask, you notice now it's going to apply the color everywhere. But every photo you run this action on, it's going to come up with a unique area where it only applies the color to. So if I hold down Alt and click on this mask to go inside, you can see everywhere that's white, it's going to apply the color and it's not going to apply it in black areas. So click back on our photo, you'll see that it hasn't applied it in those areas. So it creates this sort of cool, unique look. All right. So, and what else we can do in here? We have, we can quickly adjust the brightness of that photo. 
Oops. I'll just change this. What I'll, what I'll actually demonstrate first is that if you uh, change this blend mode, the default color of this is, uh, sorry, the default blend mode of this layer is set to color. What you can also do, you can also set this to normal and you can create much more, you can bring back that, that realism in your photo and then you can use this photo brightness layer, you can adjust uh, the contrast and all that there. But for the moment we'll just put this back to color. And what I also like to do is you can play around with the adjusting the color here by grabbing these handles. Okay, and you can go into say the highlights and change the highlights to a yellow or uh, to a red or cyan. Okay, and if you select the photo color folder, you can actually change the blend mode from here as well. So I change this to normal. You'll see that we have our um, our original photo look back. Okay, so if you prefer that look, flick that folder to normal. But you can also try other blend modes like uh, hard light. You try that. You can just cycle up through them, like I'm doing now, to experiment with different looks. Okay, so if we set this to normal. Another thing I like to do is if you select this mask on the photo color mask layer and you grab a uh, black brush, hit B on the keyboard, you can actually hide and brush into this mask where that color appears. So um, that can create a cool effect as well. So if I can set this back to um, set this back to color, now you can sort of blend. Uh, the color there, which is which is cool. So I'll undo that. I'll set this back to color. All right. So going on down, we have our photo contour lines. Now I'll move this folder out to the side so you can see what's happening. So um, the action will create all these subtle lines around all the contours of your photo and it will essentially just overlap them over the top of your photo. All right, so you go inside this folder, every single line is on a different layer, like that, so you can, you can manually move them, uh, rotate them a little bit to create some more irregularity, duplicate layers, uh, change the blend modes, you can really stack and build some cool looks. Uh, what you can also do is drag this entire folder right to the top here, um, and it will overlay in areas are much uh, stronger. You can see around his neck there. Or you could even duplicate the entire folder, hit Control J, and then you could flatten it, Control E. So now we have all the lines on one layer. So if I turn this one on and off, you can see it's made uh, those lines much more prominent now. Another thing to notice is that on each one of these folders is a mask, a folder mask. So if there's something you don't like, you can simply grab a black brush, select that mask, and you can brush away lines that you don't want. All right, so like around, so around his cheek here, say if I didn't want those lines, I can just brush that and they're gone. And that applies to all these other folders. So out of texture, if I didn't want these textures here, I can just brush there like that. All right, so this folder below diagonal lines, I'll move this one out to the side again. So you can see that it's um, probably better demonstrated over the photo. You can see all these diagonal lines here overlap. So if you go inside this folder, there are three different layers. And I'll just start from the bottom here. If I turn this one on, you can see that this one um, only appears in certain areas of your photo. So if that's too strong, you don't want it, just flick it off. Uh, you can of course move it around to different areas, duplicate it, rotate it, and then again you have these top two which will apply them in a different area, in a different contour range of your photo, and it will, it's also going in the opposite direction. Now this this top layer one, uh, sorry, this top layer inner thick lines thin one, if I turn this one on and off, that one just makes it much more uh, heavy and contrasted, so much more visual. Uh, but if you don't want that, you can turn that off. Okay, folder below, uh, layer below shadowing this is a very subtle uh, effect which will darken particular areas of your photo. 
uh, so very subtle effect. Base photo, if I turn this one on and off, you can see that it's really needed for this action. So if you go inside, we have our base photo here, which if I move outside, you can see that sits underneath everything uh, and gives it the overall sort of luminosity to the image. You can change the uh, brightness here, again of that photo, and play around with the different points here to adjust the, the contrast. You can also apply uh, a colour to appear uh, in those grey areas. So if I change this to, say, purple, you can see that wherever uh, in the photo colour folder, wherever that mask, wherever this layer is masked, so in that black area, in the black areas here, that's going to fall down onto our base photo layer. So if I turn this one off, the reason why that's grey is because this base photo is grey. So if you overlay a colour here, it will fill in those areas. So then you can sort of play around uh, with different colours that way. Alright. And down the bottom here, we have background sketch. So if I turn this one on and off, you'll see that what it does, it outlines everything else in the photo um, in this really subtle, I'll turn the opacity up to 100 so you can see, no, that didn't really do much, but you can see uh, his shoulders are outlined. If I turn on the original photo, his shoulders here, they're outlined by this layer. If I just duplicate a few times, you can see that more. And it sort of outlines the, um, yeah, the background details in the subtle sketch look. So if you don't want that, just turn it off. All right, and then we have our background color layer. So if you just double click on this, you can select a, select a color. All right, so that's pretty easy to use that one. Now, one thing to notice with this layer, if you select a dark color, you'll see that a lot of the, um, the detail has been lost around the edges. So if you just select the outer texture folder, okay, say you want a black background, just change this blend mode to normal. Okay, so it will set to pass through, set it to normal, and then we've brought back all those details, okay? So I'll put that back to pass through, and I'll put this back up here. Now, if you want to insert your own background, uh, all you need to do is turn off these bottom three layers, background sketch, background color, and background. And you'll see now we have a transparent background. So we can just import our own background, place it at the bottom of the layer stack here. And that's it, that's all we need to do. All right, so that's it, that's how you use this action. Um, please just experiment with uh, messing around with all these different layers because that's where you really create the cool effects. Uh, you'll, it's really easy once you get the hang of it, so uh, have fun, and if you've got any questions, please uh, just contact